How the Lack of Sex Degrades Your Intelligence Published on August 15, 2016, by Carl Donk A lack of regular, good and fulfilling sex in your life can have a serious negative impact on your intelligence, especially in the long term. The more chronic this lack of sex becomes, the more serious the psychological, mental, emotional, intellectual problems become. This fact has become increasingly more obvious to me based on my personal research over the years, and in this post I want to share some of my findings and thoughts on this with you. In the past I had already discussed how the lack of sex can cause various physiological disturbances or diseases inside the body such as cancer, especially cancer, of the reproductive system. In that post I had shown how a lack of sex causes tension to build up in the muscle tissue surrounding the lymphatic system inside the body. When this tension builds up and cannot be released, it starts to interfere with the normal functioning of the nearby lymphatic system, causing lymphatic congestion, and as a result starts to degrade the body's immune and waste disposal system. Some very important recent discoveries at the University of Virginia School of Medicine show that the lymphatic system connects all the way to the brain, and that this might explain the observed correlations between immune system disorders and brain disorders like Alzheimer's and depression. When the lymphatic system isn't functioning well, waste cannot be transferred out of the brain tissue and starts accumulating there. As you can no doubt imagine, this will eventually interfere with the normal functioning of the brain tissue, it'll get difficult for connections to form between neurons, and production of new brain tissue, neurons etc., will decline. This can then lead to significantly reduced cognitive abilities especially in the long term. This explains, for example, why brain fog, or clouding of consciousness, is one of the symptoms of lymphatic congestion. This further explains how a lack of sex can have a negative impact on your consciousness and intellect. In case you're not yet convinced, in two other studies, researchers from the University of Maryland and the Concord University in Seoul found that sexual activity in mice and rats improved mental performance and increased the production of new neurons, neurogenesis, in the hippocampus, where long-term memories are formed in the brain. Again we see the connection, this time between having more sex and improved mental performance. So less sex leads to degradation of mental performance, while more sex leads to improved mental performance. Due to the current state of sexual suppression and repression in authoritarian societies around the world, every individual grows up with a chronic lack of sexual satisfaction starting from very early childhood. Imagine the physiological, and psychological damage that's being done in this way to everyone in society. In fact, in his book, Children of the Future, on the prevention of sexual pathology, the brilliant psychoanalyst Dr. Wilhelm Reich details exactly how devastating sexual suppression is to children and how it impacts their later life as adults. Apart from the above mentioned physical reasons for why a lack of sex degrades intelligence, there are other ways in which a lack of sex can eventually have a negative impact on an individual's intellect. Like I mentioned before in my post why courtship and dating are a waste of time. A lack of sex causes a person to waste a significant amount of time and energy on a daily basis because they are constantly preoccupied with thinking about and looking for sex. Consequently, they have less time and energy to spend on other more important things in life, such as expanding their intellectual awareness by doing more reading, research, etc. In everyday life, you can see this going on everywhere in society. For example, men are wasting incredible amounts of time and energy pursuing women and trying to convince them to have sex with them. Hours upon hours are spent on pointless conversations, either in person or via social media and chat services, time and energy that could have been better spent on personal development, self-actualization. Even worse, due to the sexual suppression and repression brainwash that most people are exposed to starting from very early childhood, they are quite often not even consciously aware that much of their mental capacity is being consumed by their subconscious longing for sexual satisfaction. The way I compare this is with a poorly designed background app running on your smartphone that you're not aware of, but that is consuming resources. 
You might notice that your phone is reacting very sluggish and that battery life is degraded, but won't have any idea of what's causing it because the app is running in the background, subconscious or unconscious mind, as opposed to other apps that run in the foreground or conscious mind. Unless you go into a task manager or performance monitoring tool that's able to reveal all background tasks running on the phone and the resources that they are consuming, you'll never find out what's wrong. And most people, especially women, are so brainwashed that they've been trained to be completely unaware of their natural sexual desires, something known as sexual repression. So their longing for sexual satisfaction keeps consuming them from the inside without them knowing or realizing it, using up a great amount of their mental energy, interfering with their thinking and learning, and ultimately degrading their intellect. As Raya mentioned in his book, The Sexual Revolution, Sigmund Freud once derived women's general intellectual inferiority from their greater sexual inhibitions and claimed that sexual life is the basis of social achievement. In addition, due to the various written and unwritten rules that exist in societies around the world that dictate to people how they should deal with their sexuality, rules that are the embodiment of hypocrisy, people are also trained from very early childhood to become very irrational. On the one hand, they have their natural sexual desires to satisfy, but on the other hand they are often forced to deny having those in public, and often even privately to themselves. So their mind has to cope with an enduring internal inconsistency and conflict. As a result rationality suffers while irrationality becomes their second nature. And as I'm sure you can imagine, irrational thinking eventually has a negative impact on intelligence. This is especially the case in women, and is one of the biggest reasons for why they are often contradicting themselves and don't make sense. So we see that a lack of sex can severely degrade the intellect of an individual in a number of different ways. This explains why authoritarian societies suppress and repress sexuality. It keeps the people living in such societies from becoming too smart. You see, you want the slaves to be smart enough to do the work, but dumb enough not to ask too many questions and to accept their enslavement. You want them to have time and energy to do the work, but to waste any remaining time and energy chasing sex, being frustrated, fighting each other, and being unproductive as much as possible. That way they'll never become enlightened enough to realize that they are slaves, let alone being able to think about, effectively, rebelling against their enslavement. As Robert Anton Wilson mentioned in an excellent piece from 1962 titled Sexual Freedom, Why It Is Feared. Quote, Geldings, castrated male horses, any farmer will tell you, are easier to control than stallions. The first governments, which were frankly slave states, inculcated sexual repression for precisely this reason. End quote. Sexual suppression and repression in society is all about control, manipulation, and enslavement. In order to enslave an individual, you need to hijack their life force, their creative energy or consciousness, so that you can divert that energy and put it to work for you. And the sexual drives are the fundamental force behind the creative energy in an organism, that's why they are the primary attack vector. Like I mentioned in my post, Thoughts on Karma and Consciousness, you can't create or recreate without the sexual drives. Dr. Sigmund Freud established the sexual desires, our natural sexual instincts, as the primary motivating forces of human life. Even Carl Jung came to a similar conclusion when he said that sexuality is of the greatest importance as the expression of the thonic spirit, the spirit of nature within us, or consciousness. Wilhelm Reich took Freud's research even further and defined sexual energy, which he later called Orgone energy, as the universal life force, the anti-entropic principle of the universe, a creative substratum present in all of nature. Orgone comes from the word orgasm. Reich also said that it is sexual energy which governs the structure of human thinking and feeling. What then, do you think? happens to our thinking and feeling when our sexual energy is blocked. Based on all of the above, it's abundantly clear that the suppression or repression of our sexuality, one of the most fundamental and important parts of our consciousness, 
or universal life force, can only result in our stultification. I hope that this post, including the footnotes below, gives you enough to think about when it comes to your sexuality and that of others. Especially if you're a parent, take the time to study this information and to realize what kind of impact sexual suppression will have on your children. Do you want them to grow up to be healthy, intelligent, creative and independent adults, or do you want them to grow up to become ideal slaves for the state, having to deal with depression, cancer, Alzheimer's, and dementia when they grow old? And what about yourself? Do you love yourself enough to break away from this torture? Footnotes Footnote 1 From an article on Neuroscience News, Researchers find missing link between the brain and immune system, June 1, 2015 quote. In a stunning discovery that overturns decades of textbook teaching, researchers at the University of Virginia School of Medicine have determined that the brain is directly connected to the immune system by vessels previously thought not to exist. That such vessels could have escaped detection when the lymphatic system has been so thoroughly mapped throughout the body is surprising on its own, but the true significance of the discovery lies in the effects it could have on the study and treatment of neurological diseases ranging from autism to Alzheimer's disease to multiple sclerosis. The unexpected presence of the lymphatic vessels raises a tremendous number of questions that now need answers, both about the workings of the brain and the diseases that plague it. For example, take Alzheimer's disease. In Alzheimer's, there are accumulations of big protein chunks in the brain, Kipnis said. We think they may be accumulating in the brain because they are not being efficiently removed by these vessels. He noted that the vessels look different with age, so the role they play in aging is another avenue to explore. And there's an enormous array of other neurological diseases, from autism to multiple sclerosis, that must be reconsidered in light of the presence of something science insisted did not exist. End quote. Like I explained above, unreleased sexual energy is causing tension in tissue inside the body which degrades the function of the lymphatic system, which, as a result, is then unable to transfer waste out of the body. In the above example regarding Alzheimer's, the protein chunks cannot be transferred out of the brain. Footnote 2. From an article on The Atlantic, How Sex Affects Intelligence, and vice versa January 13, 2014 quote. Researchers in Maryland and South Korea recently found that sexual activity in mice and rats improves mental performance and increases neurogenesis, the production of new neurons, in the hippocampus, where long-term memories are formed. In April, a team from the University of Maryland reported that middle-aged rats permitted to engage in sex showed signs of improved cognitive function and hippocampal function. In November, a group from Concook University in Seoul concluded that sexual activity counteracts the memory-robbing effects of chronic stress in mice. Sexual interaction could be helpful, they wrote, for buffering adult hippocampal neurogenesis and recognition memory function against the suppressive actions of chronic stress. End quote. Footnote 3. For a perfect example of this, watch the video below to see the effects of sexual repression and suppression on the intellect of women. Footnote 4. This is something that Dr. Wilhelm Rye also noticed during his own research. From his book, Children of the Future, on the prevention of sexual pathology, quote. Experience shows that the ability to work becomes more and more disturbed the more unconscious sexual fantasies are, because greater amounts of psychic energy are needed to keep them in check. This decrease in the ability to work manifests itself as an inability to pay attention to what one is doing, daydreaming, lack of concentration, poor memory, as young people call it, feelings of listlessness, nervousness and restlessness. The remaining sexual interests, which cannot be sublimated, but instead drive the person to seek gratification, disrupt the work. End quote. Of course it's not just the ability to work that becomes disturbed, but the functioning of the person in general. This explains why such people can find it difficult to learn and retain knowledge, might perform poorly at school and other activities, 
cannot think clearly and critically, and might be more prone to making foolish decisions. For example, the reason why children often behave more difficult during puberty is also explained by Reich. Quote, Young people have more than merely a right to be enlightened, they are fully entitled to their emotional health and their sexual joy in life. This right has been taken away from them. Countless young people have lost all awareness of their sexuality, although this has opened the way to serious psychic disturbances during puberty. End quote. With their natural sexual instincts longing for satisfaction, continuously nagging them from the inside in their subconscious mind, without them being able to consciously identify exactly what is causing that feeling and what it is that they are lacking, it's no wonder that the behavior of children becomes especially difficult during puberty. Imagine being hungry, but having been conditioned during most of your upbringing to forget what that feeling in your stomach really means. So you don't know that you need to eat to stop that pain in your stomach. It would continue to drive you crazy. The same thing happens with sexuality in this case. Footnote 5. Like Dr. Wilhelm Reich explains in his book, Children of the Future, on the prevention of sexual pathology, quote, Let us start by comparing the few young people who have satisfactory sexual lives with the others who are unable to free themselves from the morbid influences of morality and either live in abstinence, masturbate, or occasionally get involved in platonic love affairs and wallow in daydreams. We immediately notice that those who think more clearly on sexual matters openly rebel against school and church, while the sexually inhibited young people are usually well-behaved and servile. This is not a chance phenomenon, there is a good reason for it. The suppression of sexual tensions and desires requires a great deal of energy in each person. This inhibits and impairs the development of activity, of intellect, and of initiative. On the other hand, if sexuality develops in a healthy and vigorous manner, people become more relaxed, more active, and more critical in their behavior. Families and schools are nothing more than workshops for the production of weaklings and powerless creatures or slaves who have no self-confidence. End quote. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.